Taking your camper van or motorhome to Europe can be an absolute nightmare. It was for us, we've had to return home early and there's a few things that you can do to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that we did. So as you guys know, we've been traveling full time in the UK in this removals truck camper van conversion, which is a Luton, for the last year and a half. And I think that was half the problem for us when we went to Europe recently, was that we were super complacent with that. We thought we got everything covered, but there were loads of hidden things that carry heavy fines that were part of the reason for us returning. Just a part of the reason. So this is, this is the list that we have compiled so that you get don't get stung like we did. Okay, so the first thing that stung us were the windscreen stickers. It seems ridiculous, but they carry heavy fines if you don't have them. And it starts from when you arrive in Europe from the UK, going through France or Germany or whatever. So the, in France, I believe they're called Crit Air stickers. And in Germany, I think they were called Eco Badges. It's basically a sticker to show the emissions of your vehicle and what category it is in via Euro standards on your windscreen. The reason why I'm telling you about it now is there might be potential for you to find them whilst you're in Europe, but if you're new to Europe, it might be difficult to find them, basically where sells them, where stocks them. We certainly struggled. The best thing you could possibly do is order them through post before you go there and not get caught out because we do realize they carry a heavy fine and we've heard stories about people coming off ferries and getting fined straight away with them. Another thing whilst on the subject of stickers are Euro light stickers that go on your headlamps. They're the things that because you're driving on the right hand side of the road, our vehicle lights basically blind drivers driving the opposite direction. So you need to put these Euro light stickers on. They're required by law in those countries and you can get them from Amazon and Halfords. All of this information that I'm telling you, I'm gonna put into the link uh, uh, in the description of this video via a link so you can look into it more yourself. But please do not forget the stickers. Okay, the second really serious thing that you need to know about that really surprised us actually, what that we found out whilst we were in Europe, is that certain countries require you to have winter tires during the colder months. And I think that starts from as early as November. So be sure to check your tires. In Europe, I believe in some of these countries, what they do every year is they, they have two sets of tires and they just swap them over twice a year. It's so, so, so important to remember this because you do not want to be in Europe and having to buy brand new winter tires and getting rid of the current ones. Our ones, thankfully, are rogue alloy ones, all-terrain tires. I contacted the company and they are winter tires as well, but we could have massively got caught out because we didn't know about this. And yeah, you could. some countries you can carry snow chains and get away with it. Other countries require winter tires. So be sure to check the country before you go. Okay, the third one is for all the people wishing to vlog or use Netflix or stream or anything like that whilst they are traveling around Europe. Yes, it's data roaming and internet. This completely screwed us whilst we were in Europe. We are so much wiser now and they, this is such a big and important one for us. So just to give you an update or a bit of background, before we went to Europe, we thought we had everything sorted. We bought our, a brand new router, the 5G router, and we got antennae fitted onto the roof of the camper van so that we'd be able to get really, really good signal and be able to upload and download at real high speeds whilst we're traveling around. Because, you know, as you know, we're YouTubers. We've got an Instagram channel as well, etc., etc. We found out as we went along and a little bit of information before we went that data is now capped whilst roaming using networks or providers from the UK and that is because of good old Brexit. So the best thing to do and what we found out to do because almost all networks or all providers are capped uh, sort of silly numbers as well. So you're looking at maybe some at 12 gig to 30 gig, that sort of thing. You're definitely not going to get your 100 gigs and stuff anymore, which potentially you could get by on. You used to be able to get unlimited data. Obviously, this is all gone because of Brexit. So our recommendation, now we've been there and done that and we've come back. And if we were to go back again, what we would do next time is to get a mix of a few. So getting the router and getting the ant antennae in the van is a good thing because you want to get good signal when you've got the right SIM card. Getting the right SIM card is the right thing to do. So you might be able to get, find, say, a gift gaff or something like that, a pay-as-you-go 
with um, good sort of roaming data or smart SIM card. I'll leave the link into um, uh, our description for this. Um, but the idea is, is you get a mix. So when you go to a country, the, the best thing to do is to stay in that country for a month. During that month, you get a loaded amount of credit and you could probably use a hell of a lot of data because you're using a local SIM card. As soon as you start moving around because of Brexit, there starts to be caps on your allowances and this is where it causes problems. The other thing that you can do and something that we are possibly thinking about doing ourselves is getting a Starlink. Starlink is Elon Musk's creation and it's getting better and better or so we were told. It's a satellite internet. So basically you put a little dish on top of your motorhome and it connects to that connection, connects to that satellite and you get unlimited data. And as I said, yeah, they've got a motorhome version, they've got a home version. The motorhome version costs £95 a month, but that was reduced from what we believe was about £130 a month, something, something like that. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. But I think that's possibly using a bit of that and some SIM cards is your best bet if you're planning on streaming or doing YouTube whilst on the go. Okay, so the number four thing, the thing that's really so important um, and you can't go to Europe without it, is your camper van or motorhome insurance. There are a few out there, they all differ in what they offer and what we've come across, so this is a converted removals van. So because it's a, it's a conversion, it's not registered as a camper van with a DVLA, which is almost impossible to do now um, if you've converted a van, that means you're a different level of insurance. Also, we've got a log burner in here. That's another level of insurance. And then obviously taking the log burner to Europe is another level of insurance. So we chose this insurance, which was a plan insurance, which is almost running out actually. Uh, we've almost done a full year of it. And the reason why we chose it is because they allow us to use the log burner whilst we're insured for using the log burner whilst in Europe. But they have very, very limited amount of days in Europe that you can use as well. Inside the Schengen zone or outside the Schengen zone, it doesn't matter. They usually offer 30 days, so we're told. We managed to get three months out of them, but that is the maximum that they're willing to offer. You get 90 days within the Schengen zone, which means that'll be all of it used up. What I suggest and what we're probably going to do next is having a look at different insurance companies and comparing them. There's another one called Adrian Flux that I've spoken to recently for a quote, and they basically offer longer periods of time in Europe. So definitely worth looking at as well. Um, I'm yet to find out whether they insure for log burners as well, but there's so many different things. I'll put the links to those two insurance companies in the description, but yeah, you need to look at that as well. Number five, I just want to talk very quickly about breakdown insurance. This is something that we've now got, <laughs> God forbid, we've now got two breakdown insurances. One's a really cheap UK one. And then just before we went to Europe, we upgraded to another one. The reason being was that our UK one did not cover Europe. And another thing that really gets us as well, if you're driving a big overlanding um, camper van or a massive motorhome or something like that, you might want to look at the dimensions and whether your current breakdown cover covers you in Europe. Ours didn't. So we went with RAC, none of these are affiliated or sponsored by the way. We went with RAC uh, camper insurance or camper van insurance. Um, which also comes with a campervan and caravanning um, club membership for a year as well. And they are brilliant because they require, and look this up yourself, please do, no specific dimensions of your vehicle. So it doesn't matter how high you are, we're 3.7 meters. Uh, it doesn't matter how heavy you are or how long you are, they'll come, they'll come and pick you up. So I would 100% recommend looking into that. Once again, the links are all in the description. Okay, number six, it's a right stinker. Unfortunately, as you guys know, it's not the same traveling into Europe as it was two years ago. If you do not follow the Schengen zone rules, you get fined heavily and you might not be allowed back into the Schengen zone again, or at least for a long period of time. And that is the 90 day visa rule. I'm only gonna talk about it quickly because there's a lot of information online about it. But the basic concept is you're only allowed 90 days within the Schengen zone if you're a Brit out of six months. So the Schengen zone countries basically count for the majority of them, <laughs> um, and especially all the ones surrounding Britain. Um, so your Spain, your Portugal, your France, your Germany, all in the Schengen zone, Scandinavia, lots of Scandinavia. Um, and then, so the where it becomes complicated is, like us, you are planning to go and spend a little bit of time in the Schengen zone and a little bit of time out the Schengen zone. 
and because it's rolling all the time, effectively, if you spend time out of the Schengen zone, then you're potentially getting days back to go in the Schengen zone. And that's where it all becomes really complicated. So you either look at it like this, I'm gonna give you a really good tool in a second, but you either look at it like this, from the point, the day that I'm standing on, and six months into the past, if I've spent any more than 90 days, 90 days or more within that zone, within that period, then you are have used up your maximum amount of time. Uh, what I would recommend you doing, rather than trying to work it out because it gets very confusing, is using the online tool that I'll put in the link in the description to work it out yourself. It's really, really good. If you spent a few months or weeks going from here to there, it's really, really good to work it all out for you and tell you what's left. Number seven is where we really messed up and uh, hopefully you won't do the same. It is the documents that you need to travel whilst going through Europe. Basically, we lost our logbook and the logbook, as far as I understand, is one of the most important documents apart from your passport to have with you if you're driving across the continent. So when we lost it, we went into panic mode. It was a smidge of the reason why we came back because we felt a little bit sort of out on the limb. But I believe that what we do with logbooks and important documents is we, we worry about them so much, put them somewhere safe that we lose them. Happens quite a lot. Make sure that you have at close hand, a small folder that contains your logbook. It contains your last MOT certificate. Um, the logbook being the V5C, by the way, the, the MOT certificate and your insurance details. These are all really, really handy to have. Another thing that I we learned along the way to have that's good to have in this folder is some cash in euros or in the currency of the country that you're going to because some of the fines that you get are on the spot cash fines. Weirdly enough, there's lots of Europe unlike the UK that use cash a lot still, it's very much a cash society. So make sure that you've got enough cash on you to pay you out of any bother that you might have. Okay, so eight and the last one is the one that you should already know about, but if you don't, then it's worth noting and it's essential for traveling to Europe in a vehicle. And that's the Euro vehicle kit, the emergency kit. It's basically something that you can purchase from Halfords or Amazon um, or anywhere like that. And it contains things that you need by law to carry in your vehicle if you plan on driving across the continent, including things like a warning triangle, which is the thing that diverts people uh, on the lane. If you break down on the lane, it diverts traffic around it, lets people know that there's an accident ahead. We've actually used ours since being back in the UK and it's a brilliant thing to have even in the UK. It's Honestly, excellent. Other things to have, for instance, France, I believe, requires that you carry breathalyzers. Um, so you need to grab those. They come as part of some of the kits, not all, so make sure you check that. And also, the Eurolights, what I touched upon earlier, our kit came with the Eurolight stickers that you put on your headlamps. That's very important. And other things like high-vis jackets for your seats and headlamps, spare headlamps. There's quite a few little niggly bits that you need to you need to make sure that you have. So please make sure that you purchase them. Once again, links in the description for those as well. Okay, so we're gonna eat our breakfast now. So those pancakes are well and truly done. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you did, please think about subscribing because it really helps the channel as well. And join us next time for more van life vlogs around the UK. When we wake the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun